He keep hope alive. Today I want to talk to you about hopelessness. What is hopelessness, Pastor Troy? Hopelessness is when you look forward and you don't see anything changing in your future. Do I have anybody that's ever been hopeless? Maybe I'm in the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, okay, good, good, good. Well, things just aren't working out. There is no light at the end of the tunnel. As a matter of fact, there seems to be no end at the end of the tunnel. I heard somebody say one time that there was a light at the end of the tunnel and it turned out to be a train coming straight for you. Sometimes life can be that way that it seems like the, week, the weeks, the months, the days, they get worse and worse. And I want to tell you something. Satan's chief agenda is to make you feel hopeless. He goes after pastors. He goes after members. Anybody that's ever believed for something, the devil's coming for you. Jesse Jackson said it a long time ago. He said, keep hope alive. And I want to tell you today, this is not a political message. This is a real spiritual message because there are things like financial hopelessness. If you know this, then let me hear you say amen. amen. Here's what financial hopeless says. I always going to be broke. I'm always going to be in the projects. I'm never going to have enough money. I'm always going to live from paycheck to paycheck. I'm always going to be poor. That's financial hopelessness. I need to tell you something. Things change. And when you trust God, God can turn your finances all the way around. Do I have anybody who say, yes, he can? Now, it may not happen overnight because you did not get in trouble overnight. But if you'll be patient and be persistent, I promise you, God will be prolific in your finances. Somebody say relational hopelessness. Now, this is a double-sided coin. First, we have the single people who oftentimes become hopeless. Women say, Pastor, there are no good men left. They're all either married or locked up in jail or gay. Pastor, times have changed, and it's hard out here for us single sisters. The brothers say the same thing. Pastor, it's hard out here for us single brothers because we can't seem to find any good godly women who want to help a brother build some things. All we find are gold diggers and women who want us to have six figures, even though they have no figure. These are the things I'm hearing now. This is not what I'm saying. This is what the brothers are saying. Amen, somebody? Somebody say relational hopelessness. And then the married people are coming to me saying, Pastor, yeah, it's going to get quiet in here now. I'm sick of this thing called marriage. She fooled me, Pastor. She made me think she was going to cook at least once a week. She fooled me, Pastor. Got me eating out of can on the back porch. She fooled me, Pastor. That's the inside joke, amen, somebody. She made me believe that, Pastor, whenever I needed some loving, so got quiet then. You saw how I got quiet then? Yeah, she made me think whenever I needed some loving, that all I had to do was ask. Pastor, I've been begging for a mighty long time. She got me running around the house sounding like Keith Sweat. Please, please, please. And then the sisters are saying the same thing. Sisters are saying, Pastor, my husband is, is not what I thought he was going to be. And I feel like this marriage just needs to end. Some folks have career hopelessness. How many of you have hopelessness about your job? In other words, there's no room for advancements. There's no space. It's never going to get better. You just go and make the chips and pray to shift in as soon as possible. Amen, somebody? Then last but not least, there's spiritual hopelessness. And I think this is the worst one of all. Spiritual hopelessness is when you keep making the same mistakes over and over and over again. You love God, but you keep finding yourself doing the same thing over and over again. You mess up, you repent, and you mess up, and you repent, and you keep struggling with the same issues and spiritual hopelessness says, you know what, I'm never going to overcome this. I stopped by to tell you all hopelessness is a lie. All hopeless comes from the devil. God is the God of hope. And I want you to keep your hope alive because Jeremiah 29 and 11 says God has plans for all of us. I've said this many times before and every time I read this scripture, I cannot deny the S on plans. Man, when God showed me that, it changed my life because I got to tell you something. Since I've been saved, I've messed up a few of God's plans. Oh, just about 20 of us. Come on, somebody. Yeah, God showed me a plan. He gave me the word. He gave me a blueprint, and I messed it up. And I used to get depressed and discouraged thinking I can never get what God has for me because I messed up another plan. And God said, man, go back and read Jeremiah 20 and 11 again, 29 and 11. God says, I know the plans that I have for you. God said, I got more than one plan for you because I knew you was going to mess up more than one of my plans. 
Thank God he know me better than I know myself. Now, some of y'all sitting there like you ain't never messed up no plans to God. You done messed up one because you done lied. Amen, somebody? But God got another plan. He going to forgive you. Somebody say, God's got plans for me that he declares. Watch this. Plans with an S of welfare. I get excited about this. Not for evil, to give you a future, not the rapper. Come on. And to give you a hope. <laughs> a hope. Somebody say a hope. hope. Y'all was concerned about Obamacare. No longer being there to provide for your health care and the future of your welfare. But I stopped by to tell you that if they take Obamacare, we got oh Jesus care. I wish I had a church in here. I wish I had a church in here. That's what I'm, that's what I'm leaning on, that oh Jesus care. Can't no president take that away. Why? Because God said, I got a plan for you. More than one, and I'm going to make sure you got welfare. Make sure you got a future. Make sure you got some hope. Here's what God told me to tell you. God says he can turn your bitter days into better days. Good God Almighty, maybe you don't have any bitter days. Do I have anybody can look back over your life and see some things that you just don't understand? I'm not talking about things that were done to you. I'm talking about things you did to yourself. Come on, somebody. Just, just do me a favor and look over either shoulder. It don't matter because there's trouble. on. Just look back over your life. Look back. I'm talking about your whole life. As far back, oh God, as you, come on, oh gee, as far back as you can. Did you see that? It's tough in it, Nicole. Look, look over the other shoulder because there's some other stuff you can't see from that. Oh, that, gee, good God, Jesus Christ. There's some stuff back there, y'all. But God says, I need you to understand I can take your bitter days and I can turn them into better days. Look at it again. I know the plans I have for you. I like this. God says, listen, I don't just have plans for you. I know the plans I have for you. If I write something on a piece of paper and I seal it in an envelope and I put it in your hand, you don't know what I wrote. You don't know what I wrote until you open it up and read what I wrote. Then you know what I gave you. God says, listen, I wrote it. So I know it, I'll never forget it, and as long as you seek my face, I'll always show you the next move you need to make. There is no dead end for a believer, good God Almighty. When one door closed, God will open up a... Maybe I'm just excited about my life because I've had a few doors closed in my face. I've had people who do not like me for no good reason. I say, Lord, thank you for reminding me that everybody don't love me. Hello, somebody. I guess I needed to be reminded, boy. Why you say that, Pastor? Because sometimes in life, we get shook and we get hit in places and ways that we were not expecting. But God's got a plan for those moments as well. So what'd you do, Pastor? I told the Lord to handle it. Because he said, if you hold your peace, he'll fight your battle. Tell your neighbor, that's one of his plans. If you'll forgive your enemies, God will make them your footstool. That's one of his plans. If you'll tithe and give an offering, God will bring you out of debt. That's one of his plans. If you got sickness in your body and you plead the blood of Jesus, you can't be healed. That's one of his good God Almighty plans. Somebody say, God got them plans. When the devil got them hands, God got them plans. And sometimes you're getting beat up and you don't know what to do. Just say, God, I need a plan for this. Because I didn't plan for this. Good God Almighty. What do you do when something happens you didn't plan for? No, God's got a plan for what you didn't plan for because God is the ultimate planner. God says, I know some plans and I got them for you. What kind of plans, Pastor? You selling it, it sounds good. I'm about to buy it, but I need to know what kind of plans this God got for us. I'm so glad you asked. Romans 8 and 28 calls them the inclusive package plan. You should have shot it right there, but if you, maybe you ain't never been on no cruise or maybe you ain't never been on one of them luxury vacation situations and like a five-star result where they tell you everything is all-inclusive. You better, you better go to one of those. What that means is you pay a certain fee. I wish I had somebody had been somewhere and done some things in this life. Hey Amen. You pay just a fee. You pay a fee and everything is already provided. When you get ready to eat, you go to the place where they're serving food and you tell them, I got the all-inclusive plan. They say, eat what you want. I I had a church. If you're thirsty and you want something to drink or need a Hollis, you just go up there and say, hey, give me something to drink. I don't have to pay for it. It's included in my plan. 
You want to ride down the slide. Everybody else got to buy a ticket. Oftentimes, you will have a wristband. I'm preaching on so many levels. See, everybody ain't got the wristband because everybody wasn't willing to pay the price. And there's some people want some stuff that you got, but they don't know you paid the price for that peace. You paid the price for that smile. You paid the price for the joy you got. How you got it? It was a part of my plan. Romans 8, 28 says, here's your plan. Pick this. And we know. There's the word again, no. And we know. What we know. We know that all things. How many things? All things. How many things? All things. What they do? Work. And it works together. I love my Bible. It works together for what? Man, don't you never become hopeless again. God says everything in your life, terrific and tragic, is working. Even the stuff you messed up, even the mistakes you made. Come on, even the errors, even your sin. God works it in for your good. Somebody say it's working. Together. For my good. Don't miss this. Here's the other part of the plan. You got to love God. You got to love God for everything to work together for your good. Now you understand why the devil's constantly at you trying to get you to put something above God because God said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you love me, you'll worship me. If you love me, you'll praise me. If you love me, you'll value me. So the devil says, if I can get you to mess up and put something above God, God translates that as a lack of love. Whatever you do, love God. When people don't love you, love God. And God says, I'll work it for your good, but then you got to do something else. You got to be called according to your purpose. No, your purpose. See, the hard part about being a believer is there going to be times you're going to have to do things you don't want to do. Come on, you might as well clap right there. Oh, you're going to have to forgive some folk that you just want to cut. Maybe that's just me. Pray for me. You're going to have to let some folk get away with not paying you back your money. I'm working on it. Pray for me. Because sometimes God will say, I got you. I know you was planning on being reimbursed. But, yes, but, if you love me, you're going to have to trust me. And you're going to have to operate according to his purpose. So let me tell you something. The devil's trying to pull us all out of his purpose. First of all, you got to know what is his purpose. His purpose is for you to have the love and the light of God shining in your life. Peep this, especially when you're going through trouble and tribulation. Anybody can name the name of Jesus when everything is popping. But can you name the name of Jesus when everything dropping? I wish I had a church. When ain't nothing working out, when they laying off, light done got cut off, your haters coming for you. Can you still praise and worship God? You can if you know your purpose. When I'm walking in God's purpose, can't nothing hurt me. Can't nothing harm me. Can't nothing stop me or block me. Why? Because I'm walking in God's purpose. Can I go deeper? Once you know all things work together for your good, once you know that God knows the plans that he has for you, then you should go to Psalms 50 and 15. Man, this is a good message. Psalm 50 and 15 says, when you know all things work together for your good, you know who to call on. See, when you're calling on the pastor and calling on your friends and calling on everybody but Jesus, you don't know that only God can make some stuff work together for your good. And it's all right to have friends and prayer partners and intercessors, but you need a personal relationship with Jesus Christ where if you can't get in touch with nobody on earth, you can get in touch with somebody in heaven. God says, call upon me. I like this right here. When? In the day, I'm about to preach myself happy, y'all. Call upon me in the day when? In the day of what? Trouble. This side ain't got no trouble because I ain't heard nothing over here. In the day of what? Trouble. Still ain't got no trouble. In the day of what? Trouble. This must be the side to sit on because they have no trouble. Amen, somebody? Keep living. It's coming. Can I bless you? God says when you know, then you will call on me, him. God, he says, when you call on me in the day of trouble, God ain't got no problem with you calling on him when you get in trouble. I've heard pastors beat you up because you, you run to God when you get in trouble. They beat you up because you come to church when things are rough. That's the way God planned it. 
Some of y'all hold your seat. God planned for you to be here today. He'd been trying to get you here for a few weeks, but he couldn't get you here. So what he did, he allowed a little more trouble. Uh, Y'all ain't ready for no church today. He allowed a little more trouble to come your way. And you said to yourself, I'm going to church Sunday. I don't care. I don't care if I'm tired. I don't care if my breath stank. I'm going to church. If I ain't got no deodorant, I'm going to church. Kind of had one hell of a week. Hello, somebody. See, oftentimes we think it's the devil. Major key alert. The devil can't do nothing to you unless God pre-approve it and give him permission to do it to you. You don't believe it? Holla at Job. The devil was salivating for Job's soul. He was salivating to touch Job's life. But before he could touch Job's life, he had to get permission from Job's God. And God said, I'll give you permission to mess with him. He ain't going to deny me. Watch this. Because he know I got plans. I wish I had a church. He ain't going to deny me because he know I'm a good God. And the devil touched everything but his body. la de da Rick, come on, y'all pray for him. I need some help. Touched his wife. She lost her mind. Job's wife told Job. For real. This somebody you done married and they took care of. You been there for her. And at your lowest point, when you need your boo and your bae to step up and speak a word in your life, this trick, oh, she became a trick the moment she said what I'm about to tell you she said. She says to her husband, Job, hey, player, won't you curse God and die? Use a trick. And I'm not falling for it. Can I bless you? In relationships, everybody in relationship got to have their own personal relationship with God because sometimes your mate, your husband, or your wife will be talking sideways, and if you don't know Jesus for yourself, you'll mess around and fall for the trick. Some of you wives got a husband, and the minute he tell you you don't need to go to church, he is a trick. You don't need to go to church and use a trick. I'm going to church, player. I will cook you some biscuits and salmon when I get home, but I'm going to worship the Lord John Henry. I'm so quiet in here now. God said, call on me. When? In the day of trouble. Peep this. God says, I shall. Boy, somebody hold my mule, Shirley Caesar. I shall. Green beans, yep, I shall strengthen you. I'm preaching to somebody today that need a little strength. God says, if you call me, I'm going to strengthen you. Peep this. And when I strengthen you, peep this. You gone. Mama say, Mama Simon, Mama say, you gone. Glorify. Major key alert. Most people miss what I'm about to drop on you. But I'm going to drop it like it's hot. Hope you pick it up. God does not take you out of your trouble the first time you call upon him. I wish to God somebody had told me this as an early young Christian. Because as an early young Christian, I thought when I prayed, God would take me out of whatever I was going through immediately and I wouldn't have to go through it anymore because I called upon the Lord. God says you got tricked. Because if you look at the text, God does not talk about taking you out of your situation. He actually talks about strengthening you while you're in your trouble. You got any more word? Yes, yeah, Psalm 91 15 backs me up. Roll that beautiful bean footage. When they call on me, when they call on me, I like the fact it didn't say if they call on me. Every child of God sooner or later wakes up and comes to their senses and you're going to call on God. If God is your bedrock, you're going to crack your mouth and say, God, I can't take no more of this. If you don't come down here on this job, somebody leaving in body bags today. If you don't come down here and help me with these children, they're going to be on the side of a milk box looking for them, God. If you don't help me with this husband, I'm going to cut him in the night, Jesus 
God said, call on him, please. I can't help but look at Psalms 9, the 1 and 15. And I can't help but see 911. I wish I had a church. I wish I had a church up in here. I can't help but see, don't, I, don't let the semicolon throw you off. I can't help but see 911. And sometimes you got to know who to call and when to call. And God said, call on me. What's this, Silk? God said, I will. That's a money back guarantee. No money down. God says, if you call on me, I will answer. Major key alert, you call on PT, he may not answer. No, don't get mad. Y'all church folk got to realize some things, Ryan. Jim, I'm a man just like you a man. I sleep like you sleep. I like to eat like you eat. And I like to go to the bathroom just like you go to the bathroom. Now, I know you want a 24-hour pass, but y'all ain't paying for no 24-hour pass. Now, if you like to know the price tag on that, we'll holler about it later, but you're a long way from it. That ain't bad news. This is good news. There's a 24-hour God. Don't sleep. Don't pee. Don't boo-boo. Hello, somebody. His name is Jesus, and he's always ready to answer your call. You better call him. He said he will. He will answer. But here's the revelation that we miss. God says, I will be. This is a good word right here, dog. I will be with them in trouble. As princes like to say, skr, skr. I will be with them in trouble. Hold up. Wait a minute. I called on you, God. Don't miss this. To get me out of trouble. God said, you got it twisted. When you call me, I'm not coming to get you out of trouble. I'm coming to get into trouble with you. You frustrated and agitated and aggravated because God hadn't gotten you out. You better learn how to look around and know God is in it with me. Why? Because I ain't cussed nobody. I ain't cut nobody. I ain't shot nobody. I ain't hurt nobody. I ain't killed nobody. God got to be with me. Because if he wasn't in it with me, body bags and toe tags. I wish I had a church in here. God said, if you call on me, can I go deeper? He says, I'm going to be with y'all now. In trouble. After I'm with them in the trouble, then I rescue them. See, the divine order is first God joins you. Then he frees you. Watch this. Then he honors you. See, we done missed all our blessings. We teach you to honor God, but God says, if you can learn how to trust me in your trouble and learn that in your trouble I'm with you, when I get you out, it ain't over. I'm going to honor you for representing me in your mess, in your situation, letting the world know what a real believer looks like. Here's the truth. Can you see God when you're going through? So God quiet then. Folks talking about, I want to hear God. No, can you see God? Here's divine revelation. The longer it takes for you to recognize God in your trouble, the longer it takes for God to rescue you from your trouble. Yeah, you should have wrote that down. The longer it takes for you to recognize God in your trouble, the longer it's going to take for God to get you out of your trouble. Tell your neighbor, you better recognize. You got any word for that? Yeah, the Hebrew brothers, Shadrach, Meshach, and that bad Negro. I'm sorry, Abednego were placed in the, this side read the Bible, thank you, the fiery furnace. Bible says they turned that bad boy up seven times harder to make sure they felt the heat. Notice how God didn't stop them from turning up the fire. God didn't stop them from throwing them in the fire. God let them go all the way into the fire. But what does God do next? God shows up in the fire with them. Why didn't he rescue them? Why did he decide to join them in their situation? I'm so glad you asked. 
so that the enemy that put them in the fire could see that though we put three men in, there's a fourth man in who's walking around the fire. God going to make sure your enemy see God is with you when you're going through. Can you praise him in the midst of your problems? Can you worship him when you're wounded? Can you sing to him when you're in your prison cell? Can you keep the faith in the fiery furnace? Peep this, can you tithe when your money is tight? And can you give an offering when things just ain't right? When you do, you say to God, I can see you in my situation. See, a lot of y'all got a good talk game. But God ain't trying to really hear all your talk game. He's trying to see what your walk game look like. He's trying to see, do you hold your head up high when you've had one heck of a week? He's trying to see, are you able to shake that person's hand today in church, even though you know they've been talking about you and you know they don't like you? This side ain't going to do it. Amen, somebody? Somebody say, I got to keep hope alive. Last night in preparation for my message as I get ready to close, for real, for real, for real, for real. I decided, Silk, good to see you play. I decided, James, sitting on the back porch eating out a can. I decided, Pete, throw everybody under the bus. I decided to go back in time. I decided to relive a childhood memory in hopes of using it to help me preach today's sermon. So I pulled up the old laptop and I Googled an old classic called Cinderella. Hadn't seen it since I was a young thing. That's been a while. And I sat at the end of my table watching Cinderella online on my laptop, and I was amazed at how much I had forgotten about this epic story. I remember that Cinderella's mother had died, and her father was in search of a woman who could be a mother to his daughter. So he married this woman hmm, who had two daughters. Major key alert, be careful who you marry. Anyway, uh, anyway, he, he married this woman, <laughs> pray for me now, thinking that she was going to love his daughter as much as he did. And soon after they got married, Cinderella's father passed away, leaving Cinderella in a house with haters who can't stand her. She was abused and humiliated each and every day by her stepmother and her two stepsisters, Anastasia and Drizella. Anybody named Drizella going to give you a hard time. I just need you to know that, Major Key. Ain't no way because they mad because they got an ugly name and they're going to be ugly to everybody. And they was ugly to Cinderella. Story goes on that the wicked stepmother had promised Cinderella that if she could find something nice to wear, she could go to the ball. But we all knew that her mother or stepmother had no intentions of letting her go. The stepmother was only concerned about her own two and had no love for that which had been entrusted to her. So the other two, and they are really cosmetically challenged sisters, they ready to go, got their little dresses, and they walking. Go back and watch it. They walking like this, and their little booty bouncing. It's in the cartoon. I didn't they, go back and watch it, y'all. And they getting ready to go. Look, they, 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 this is how they walking. And at first, Cindy said she wasn't going to the ball because she was tired of being used and abused and had, didn't have no time to fix her mama's dress that her mama had left to her. She was going to fix it up. But while she was working for somebody else, the rats, and the birds came together and hooked her dress up. Major killer, God will bring creatures into your life that will bless you more than those who are your kind. I could drop the mic, but it costs too much. Can I go deeper? So she's getting ready to go out the door with her two stepsisters. 
She come down the hallway saying, look at me, look at me. Don't I look beautiful? Don't you like my dress? And the three of them stop and they look at her like true haters look at you. And they be like, uh, them bees look real familiar. The little ratchet sister say, them my bees. And she walk over, I, tell, I almost tore my laptop up. She walk over to Cindy and she snatched the beads off her neck. I say, you a little helpful. That's a cow, right? Pray for me, Silk. I need help. Then the other sister came and said, that's my sash. That's my ribbon. And they snatched this girl dressed to pieces. And she's standing there looking raggedy because she got haters in her house. She's so broken, coach, that she runs out of the house, runs into the woods, and she sits down and she's crying and sobbing. Y'all got to go see this man. And she says these words. I couldn't believe she said it. I didn't remember it as a kid, but she said it last night. She says, I can't believe anymore. She said, there's nothing left to believe in. I said to myself, that a priest player. Because I've been there. I've been there dealing with people so many times that all they want to do is tear you down and bring you down. And when you think you got yourself together, they do everything to bring you right back down to a lower level. And it was in that moment when she was broken and hopeless. Woo, I feel good, coach. That her fairy god mama showed up out of nowhere. Now, I ain't preaching about fairy god mothers. I know ain't no such thing as fairy godmothers, but can I have my sermon? Fairy godmother showed up and said to Cindy in so many words, Cindy, do you still have hope? Cindy, can you still see yourself going to the ball? And man, Cindy was so hopeless and so beaten down that Cindy couldn't see the future. Why? Because she was too busy looking at her past. She was too busy looking at her pain that she could not hear the promise that the fairy godmother was trying to offer to her. The only thing she could see was her raggedy clothes. Some rats, I'm about to preach church, a dog, a horse, and a pumpkin in a pumpkin patch. I stopped by to tell you that there's some stuff around you that don't look like much, but things are about to change. I stopped to tell you that there's some things around you that don't look like they're going to get you nowhere. But when God show up, things are about to change. Somebody say, preach, pastor. Fairy godmother said, let me get my magic wand and let me show you what I'm working with. First thing she did, she found the pumpkin. And the fairy godmother church turned the pumpkin, God Almighty, into a beautiful Stage coach, I was sitting on the edge of my chair like I ain't never seen before. I said, look at that. <laughs> coach, it was a beautiful stage coach out of a pumpkin. But then the stage coach needed some horses. I'm from the country. And instead of her using the horse that was present, Adrian, because that horse that was present was kind of up in age. And he was just one. He wasn't enough to pull the coach. But you at least thought that because he was a horse, he would have gotten the assignment to pull the coach. Let me bless you. There's some stuff that looks like it's going to help you, but it's not going to help you the way that you think it's going to help you. Just because it looks like it fits the part, let God decide what goes well in your life. The fairy godmother looks over. I couldn't believe she did this. And she found the four rats. And she turned four rats. Help me somebody. Into four beautiful horses. I'm talking about beautiful stallions. And they all trotted over there to the coach. They backed that thing up. I, I saw it more myself, y'all. I seen it for myself. Somebody said they backed that thing up. And they hooked up to the coach, and she was almost ready to go. But every coach need a coachman. What's the coachman, Pastor? That's the person going to drive that bad boy. See, some of you so used to driving yourself that you don't know that when God gets ready to turn your life around, God going to put somebody in your life that will allow you to take a break. I wish I had a church in here. They're going to allow you to sit down for a while and they're going to get you where you're trying to go. So she looks at the horse that I told you about and turns the horse into an elegant, sophisticated coachman. What does he do? He hops up in the coach seat. He get the reins of the four horses that were once rats, and he's in position and ready to go. 
but sometimes you got to wait for God to finish what he started. Hello, somebody. Then the fairy godmother says, every coach needs a footman. Now, I'll tell you something. I didn't know what that was. I said, what is a footman? I had to go Google that. A footman is the person that assists you in getting in the coach and getting out of the coach. I wish I had a church. Isn't it amazing how God will put people in your life that don't mind you rising up so that you can arrive to your location? They ain't trying to trip you. They ain't trying to trap you. They trying to... I got a church in here today. And she turns the dog, good God Almighty. I say she turns the dog. I wish y'all could feel in my sanctified soul what I feel. She turned the dog into the footman. You know the revelation I got out of that. Don't throw your dogs away. Because God said he'll make your enemy your footstool. I believe he'll make your dogs. Hello, somebody, your footman. Everybody dogging you. God will make them turn around and lend you a hand and help you go on up to the next. Thank you, dog. Major Key alert, the more dogs you got, the more help you got. Roof, roof. Somebody ought to text somebody and say, thank you, dog. And she's just about ready to go. Ready for the sophisticated people. Well, one last thing is out of order. She's standing there in the midst of transformation. I wish y'all could love this message like me, boy. Everything else around her has been transformed into amazing things. But she's still in her raggedy dress. But what does the fairy godmother do? The fairy godmother waves the wand and turns her tattered and torn dress into a beautiful ball gown. Peep this. The ball gown came with shoes. I wish I had a church in here today. I'm sitting down watching and I'm thinking, she ain't measured her feet. My mind is different from y'all's. I said, she should have measured her feet because she, she ain't got no leather slippers. She ain't got no pleather slippers. Don't you look at your shoes, look at me. This girl done got herself some glass slippers. Now, I done had a whole lot of shoes in my life. Snake skin, alligator skin, dog skin. I done wore all kinds of skins. But I ain't never had no glass shoes. I'm looking on Amazon when I get home to find me something. And you know your pastor will wear them bad boys. Gave that girl some glass slippers and said, boo, I know you've been beat and abused and talked about and mishandled, but you are about to go to the B-A-A-A. When you get there, ball out. She gets ready to hop into the coach, take that ride, and the fairy godmother say, ooh, My translation. She said, ooh. What's up, fairy godmother? God, I'd like to forget. There's one stipulation you need to know. All these things that have been transformed will transform back into their original state. Don't miss this, especially if you were here last Sunday at midnight. How he do that? That's something sweet right there. At midnight, it's all going back. So if you don't want to be showed up, you need to exit before midnight because all your stuff going to be changed back to what it was. So, well, Pastor, that part of the story just kind of sucks because it would have been nice if she could have stayed all night. That's some of y'all problems. I'm preaching on so many levels in this church today. That's some of y'all problem. You don't know when to go home. You don't know when you done had enough. You don't know when it's time to get your tail out of them. If Cindy needed a curfew, so do you. At midnight, boo, you're going to have to, I don't care what the DJ is dropping. I know Silk going to drop the baddest song at 12 midnight to the window. You better get your tail out of there at midnight, girl. And she was having such a good time, peep this, dancing with the prince. But peep this, she didn't even know she was dancing with the prince. 
See, she wasn't looking for nobody special. Somebody special found her. I ain't got time, but I like this message today. The prince cuffed her and scooped her and started dancing with her, and she didn't even know it was the prince because when it got close to midnight, she said to the prince, I got to go. And then she said, well, you know, if I had a chance to dance with the prince, it probably wouldn't have been no better than this. And the prince is like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Ain't nothing more precious than to have somebody in your life that love you for you and not for your stuff. Not because of what you got. This girl dancing with the prince, they done locked eyes, they want to kiss. Come on, somebody. And she don't even know who she dancing with. He's impressed because he's found somebody that's not into stuff, but she's into substance. Long story short, she runs out of the castle and she's getting it. And at the bottom of the staircase, couldn't have been nobody but God. Her shoe falls off. She runs, shoe falls off, and she tries to go back and get it. But the prince is closing in on her, and she has to make an executive decision. Do I stay here to get the shoe and have him see me without my glory? That's why that relationship didn't work. You stayed too long. Good God Almighty, you should have you should have got out when God told you to get. I'm, I'm preaching to somebody today, y'all. She says, well, listen, I don't want him to see me without my glory because the glory is what's making me look hot tonight. The glory is what's got me popping tonight. The glory is what's making me look so glamorous. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the shoe and get on back to the crib. She heads out and the coach is going as fast as it can. They say, close the gates, close the gates. And they close the gates just in the nick of time for her to get out. The dude sends soldiers to follow her and catch her because the prince wants his baby back ribs. I want my baby, 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 baby back ribs. And she gets on in the woods and midnight struck and before she got home, preach Pastor Troy Wynn Sr. Before she got home, stuff started changing back. Stuff started falling apart. Things were looking real good, but she's going right back to her situation. Sometimes it gets very discouraging when God will bless you for a moment, but you got to go right back to your situation. I wish I had a church in here. And in the woods, it all falls to pieces. And everything changes back don't miss this. I'm sitting on the edge of my seat looking at this on my computer. Everything changes back except the slipper that's still on her foot. I don't know about you, Kennedy, but I've been thinking all night, why didn't that slipper change back with the rest of the stuff? Hold your seat. The slipper at the house, it didn't change back neither. How everything changed back except for the glass slippers. Well, God must have had a plan. Because the prince said, we got a slipper. We ain't got no address. We don't know who she is or where she lives. But we're going to hit this city with this shoe. And we're going to put it on every foot, big foot, small foot, stinking foot. We're going to put it on every foot. And wish it ever foot fit the shoe. Bring that woman to me. Because I'm going to make her my wife. If the shoe fit, she got to wear it. I wish I had a church in here. Send this home and she's just reminiscing about the night she had. Word hits the city. Oh, the prince sending somebody door to door. He got a shoe, glass slipper. If your foot fit, you get married. First thing she do is she called them two ugly stepdaughters of hers. And say, girls, this is your last chance. You get your foot in this shoe, we straight. You get your foot in this shoe, we can move from the outhouse to the white house. You get your foot in this shoe, we going to be all right. They getting ready, and the dude come by the house, he try the shoe on the first girl. It don't fit. Try the shoe on the second girl, it don't fit. Don't miss this. 
But before he got there, old ugly, evil, mean, hateful stepmother been watching Cinderella. And she see her singing with joy, especially at the news that the prince is sending somebody with a shoe. And let me tell you something, it's some folk watching you that are watching you because they about to figure out God done put something on you and it going to make them hate you even more. She's watching Cinderella say, something ain't right about this. And she figures out in her mind, Sean, oh my God. Cindy was the girl had the ball. And if I let Cindy put this shoe on, she going to leave us in the hood. So what does a mean stepmother do? Follow Cinder up the Cinder room and locks her. Go watch it, y'all. In her room. And I see Cindy. I was crying for Cindy. Cindy said, please let me out. Please don't do this. Please don't lie. I said, I'm that dog. I said, I said, I'm that dog. This her, is this her chance. I'm that dog. This her moment. I'm that dog. Would you not know that thing did not unlock that dog? She's dying there watching them ugly daughters try to shoe on that won't fit. I'm preaching. I hope y'all getting this. And she had the key in her right pocket. I'm preaching. Y'all don't like this kind of message. She had her key in the right pocket, but it was in there for the wrong reason. But thank God for the rats. I wish I had time still to break this message down, but I ain't got that much. Thank God for the rats. Because the rats say, hey, players, Cindy been good to us. Won't we turn a good favor for old Cindy? Won't we get that key out that pocket, climb up them steps, and let's get Cindy out here? Long story short, they do the job. They go upstairs. It ain't easy, but they get it done. They unlock the door, and when the man getting ready to leave with the glass slipper, Cindy come down and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I wish y'all could see it like I see it. See, come down them steps. Let me tell you something. When you know God done gave you a second chance, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. When you know God done gave you a second chance, wait a minute. You counted me out. Wait a minute. You didn't think I was going to make it. Wait a minute. You talked about me. Wait a minute. That girl walked down them steps like a real G. Wait a minute, she came on down. I'm gonna show you how the devil works now. I'm about to go. She sat down in that chair. Lord, let this thing hold me. Oh, I, I got to sit on one leg because it ain't gonna work, y'all. And he was getting ready to try to slip her on. I believe it was the right foot. And when he gets ready to walk over to Cindy to try to slip her on, the evil, ugly, cruel stepmother sticks her stanky leg out. <laughs> Stick her stanky leg out and trips the brother with the glass slipper and boop, 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 crash, it breaks. The camera pans to the face of the evil stepmother and she stands there with this evil, nasty grin of happiness and joy on her face because she thinks she's won. She thinks she has spoiled the plan of God. She thinks that ain't no way you're going to get it now because I done broke the shoe. But Cindy say, hold up, wait a minute. Good God, I'm out of here in here. That girl reached her pocket and say, would it help if I had the other shoe? Now I know why that shoe didn't turn back to what it was. Now I know why that shoe survived the trouble, survived the pain, survived what she had to go through. That shoe was a part of God's plans. Don't you cry over nothing you lost. Peace, Holy Ghost. Don't you cry about nobody walked out your life. If they left, let them leave. God will replace them. Don't you trace them. Cindy gives the shoe to the brother. He slides it on her foot. And guess what? 
that bad boy fit. And her whole life changed. She went from hopelessness to living a life of hope. Three quick points and I'm out of here, I promise you. And I do mean quick. Number one, when God steps into your trouble, things are about to change if you keep hope alive. Number two, this is my favorite one, I believe. Everything you need is right there if you keep hope alive. And then number three, it may not look like much until God shows up. Keep hope alive. I'm about to go, Pastor Tish, come on. Somebody say, keep hope alive. Spell hope for me. Here's an acronym for you. Hope stands for have only positive expectations. I don't care how bad it looks, have only positive expectations. I don't care what you got to go through, have only positive expectations. Why? Because if you can keep hold on that, God can turn your situation around. Give God praise if you've been blessed by the word today. Somebody say, I will. Keep hope alive. High five three people.